Hello and welcome. Today we'll be looking at how ServiceNow helps security incident response teams tackle their work far more efficiently and effectively than ever before. We'll start with the big picture and dive into the key elements of the solution. It is typical to see a 40 to 60% reduction in time to resolve security incidents when converting from a more manual and disparate handling process thanks to the integrations and automation that we have on the ServiceNow platform. When results like these are achieved, our customers can use dashboards like this one to report on their security incident risk posture over time. First, we'll be assuming the role of the CISO, Andrew Lin. Here, we're looking at the Security Operations Efficiency Dashboard. On this dashboard, we have three tabs. The first tab, Analyst Efficiency, is one that allows us to take a look at our security incidents and really look at the efficiency by individual analysts as well as by groups or the teams that are working security incidents. Uh, so here we can see the uh, trending of open security incidents by analyst and how many have been closed by individual analysts. As I scroll down, we start to see uh, time to resolve the average security incidents age. And further down below is where we get into the uh, analysis of security incidents by team. So here we can see over time, how many have uh, been in the backlog for a particular team, how many have been closed by a particular team, and if I scroll down further, we can see the aging of security incidents by team and resolution time by team. On the next tab, detection and response effectiveness. Here we can see trending by true positive, how many security incidents are actually being closed, true positive versus false positive, uh, the age of false positives in the environment, risk score on those security incidents being closed as false positives. And as I scroll down further, we can start to look at security incidents uh, based on the source, based on which particular integration or avenue that the security incidents are being created from. And further scrolling down, we can start to look at security incidents being closed over time and their average resolution time. Uh, down below here, we have the security incident backlog analysis showing what's currently open and the average open time. On the next tab, the incident risk score analysis. This takes another uh, lens into security incidents by the actual risk score that's calculated on an individual security incident. Those risk scores can take into account uh, various factors such as the alert severity, uh, enrichments from our threat intelligence tools and more. So here we have the uh, total uh, risk exposure over time across all security incidents. Uh, down below here, we have another view into security incidents that are being worked on by a particular team and their overall total risk score, right? That's the risk posed to the uh, environment or the organization. The CISO dashboard for security incident response provides a high level view into security incidents across the enterprise. Here at the top, we can see the average time to identify, contain, and eradicate week over week. Down below, we can see new security incidents created in terms of volume this week, uh, close this week, and some running totals over the past seven days. Down below here, we can look at a stacked pattern of new versus closed on a daily basis, new versus closed on a weekly basis, and here, how particular security incidents are being closed out. Further down below, we have a security incident map that actually illustrates the locations of particular security incidents in our organization. The NOW platform is fully integrated with the MITRE ATT&CK framework for threat intelligence, which can provide valuable insights that security professionals need to get work done better every day. MITRE ATT&CK can assist security leaders in managing security programs by helping them understand how the various defensive systems are performing and identify where there may be any gaps. The MITRE ATT&CK heat map and navigator can provide immediate visibility into patterns where the department is seeing any concentration of security incidents or is dealing with any relevant vulnerabilities. It also provides a quick visual of the current security posture for detecting and defending against each of these attack techniques. All of this helps security leaders and the CISO 
understand where investments of time and resources are most needed. Here we set a filter group to show how the heat map and navigator functions and changes that occur when we set these filters. This is an extremely valuable resource when it comes to thwarting the attack patterns that impact and threaten the organization the most, such as those from advanced persistent threat groups like APT-29. You can see as we add in this final data point of the known adversary group, it draws in all of the known techniques of this APT. Security leaders and the CISO can drill down into each of these. But moreover, this shows the current organizational posture and defense against this known APT. So you can see that we're getting everything in one place, but you may be asking yourself, how did we get here? It all starts with integrations. There are baseline integrations with security sensors and SIM platforms, such as Azure Sentinel, QRadar, ArcSight, Logarithm, Splunk, and Splunk Enterprise Security. Threat intelligence platforms are also very helpful for security incident handling, saving analysts time with automated threat lookups. Customers can also request these integrations right here from the ServiceNow store. Once installed, these applications can be configured inside your ServiceNow instance. Some simply require APN here, while others have more options such as filtering to restrict the data that you want to collect. Phishing emails come in a variety of different forms and often they can include a malicious attachment. Analysts can now submit malicious attachments for in-depth malware analysis using the CrowdStrike Falcon Sandbox integration. The integration allows for both manual and automated submissions as well as a variety of other settings. This provides the possibility for the sandbox submission results to be completed during the triage process and ready when the analyst first opens the security incident. Here we are in the security incident response workspace and acting as incident handler Adam Long. From here, the analyst sees incidents that are assigned to them or their team. Let's take a look at a recent incident that has been created automatically. The analyst opens it in a new tab. They can keep multiple incidents open at a time if they need to multitask as automations run. In the overview tab, the analyst has the most pertinent information related to the security incident, across business impact for related configuration items or affected users, and relevant threat intelligence for associated observables on this incident. Clicking on the details tab, the analyst can also see information that is stored on the security incident table over here. With the investigation tab, the analyst can dig into any of the details on the security incident, such as who is affected by it. In this case, Robert Smith is the first person to report the phishing email. The analyst can also benefit from deduplication. In this case, the email has been reported several times by different individuals seen here. Lastly, we can see the number of configuration items that have been targeted by this phishing email. Parsed observables end up here, along with whether or not they are deemed malicious from threat lookups that have already been run upon creation of the security incident. The analyst doesn't need to be an expert in dozens of products to leverage all of their organization's threat sources. To perform a firewall block, we pick an IP or URL and check the box next to it. From the options menu, we can then go to the allow block request and submit our block request here. This works the same way with citing search to find any matching log entries with connected systems. Next, the analyst takes a look at the email that was reported. From here, they can also search for and delete related emails on their connected email systems. If you have an asset in play, then there are more automation options. For example, the analyst can take one of these and isolate the host from the network if needed. Forensic evidence can also be retrieved automatically from devices, such as information about network communications. This is in addition to simply having any available CMDB information for context. With MITRE attack enrichment, we can surface relevant techniques on observables linked to security incidents. 
This can help analysts in their response efforts with relevant context and prioritization. From here, the analyst can also review all associated MITRE attack techniques across the security incident. This is very helpful for reference purposes and prioritization of response efforts. Here we see the playbook pane. The analyst can see where they are in their team security automation playbook for phishing. The threat intelligence orchestration we discussed has taken place and the person that submitted the email has been contacted and acknowledged. When tasks are created, they end up in the playbook. The manual steps that we highlighted prior in terms of automated blocking and citing searches can also be incorporated through automation and orchestration in the playbooks themselves. Playbooks offer a number of types of steps. Here, the ability to show a knowledge article can help guide the analyst or security teams with great visual illustrations. Checklists are another great playbook step that can also help guide analysts through the course of their investigation. Now that these first playbook steps have been completed, the analyst only needs to review and confirm the findings. Here, we'll go ahead and proceed to the containment and eradication. Orchestration capabilities like triggering past resets for impacted users can be launched from playbooks. The only thing left for the analyst to do now is complete the post-incident review. Here, they can close out the incident and complete any assessments or post-incident reports. The analyst can then pivot to reviewing and tailoring the post-incident report with the conclusion of their findings. On-call scheduling ensures that dedicated team members are available to resolve issues as they arise. Let's take a look at the CERT on-call schedule. Customers can manage their on-call schedules for security incidents with calendars across the different teams and team members that they have in their process. They can also go to the shifts and manage the preferred uh, notification and escalation policy. And here we can see the number of reminders, how frequent to reminder, and the escalation path that can be configured. Today, we've looked at how ServiceNow is helping security incident handlers by providing a single system of record and action, automating manual tasks, orchestrating security processes, improving prioritization with integrated threat analysis and business impact triage, enhancing collaboration between security and IT, and providing big picture analytics necessary to track and improve KPIs. Thank you.